Hello everyone. Today I want to welcome Iman. Today uh, Iman is here with us to talk about how to adapt materials on the fly, whether it's age appropriate level or maybe it's the English appropriate level. How do you adapt it to the student's needs? But before we start, I want to have Anna or I want to have Iman tell us a little bit about herself, her teaching background. Can you give us a round down like a one minute rundown of your experience versus maybe you were teaching online or before that were you teaching how long have you been teaching online who have you mm -hmm. worked for a little bit of a rundown okay sure I am originally from the US born and raised here mm -hmm. in 2007 I came across a magazine randomly uh, browsing uh, in a bookstore one day called transitions abroad and I opened it up and it was all about teaching English overseas and getting a TEFL certificate and traveling and teaching so I thought that sounds great that sounds like a great career change and I want to do this so I actually um, moved to Cairo Egypt and I did the teaching English as a foreign language training there. I participated in an in-class 120-hour certificate training program in addition to doing a six-week internship with the organization Teaching Adults uh, Intermediate level. And I worked briefly in some schools in Cairo elementary schools. I taught second grade for a little bit, English, math, science, and social studies. In 2010, I decided that I wanted to pursue this as a career and that I needed to return to the States and continue my education. And since then, I've earned an associate's degree in education. I have a bachelor's degree in international relations, and I'm also currently working on my master's degree in second language acquisition. I started teaching online in March of this year with iTutor Group, and I absolutely love the flexibility of working online, not to mention that it's awesome working with people in uh, another country and another culture. We do so much uh, cultural exchange. And I also recently started working with Cambly also. Okay, what is Cambly? Cambly is another, um, Cambly is an, uh, an application that students from all around the world can connect with a native speaker or an English language tutor um, anywhere anywhere else in the world. So it's a platform. They can buy packages of how many um, uh, sessions they want to buy or how many minutes they want, and they can do speaking practice or basically whatever else they want to work with. Sometimes nice. they want to do test preparation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fun application. So what do you do if the materials, if you finish early because I think that's one of the most common problems. How do you extend the materials to not finish too early? Mm -hmm. Well, personally myself, before I begin a session, I write down some key information in a notebook. I write down the date and the time, the session number, and I also write down the title and how many slides there are and how many students there are. So in my preparation, I can kind of figure out how much time I need to spend per slide. So I never finish early because I write down all my session notes beforehand, how many slides I have, how many students, okay. and I basically figure how much time do I need to spend per slide. And that also helps me figure out, do I need filler material here? Sure. Um, but again, it, you, I haven't met the students yet. Right. So I might, all my planning might totally change once I meet them, and I might have to adapt all over again. So. Okay, so then what do you do if a student joins the class and they're, the material is too difficult for them? Then what? Mm -hmm. Well, I always make sure to go in rotation with my students. Their names appear on the side of the screen, and I type their name up at the top of the slide. So it's your turn to read or it's your turn to talk. This way I'm giving everybody equal time. And if there are, say there are three students in the class and two of them are perfect for that level and one of them is a little bit below. What I will do is I will tailor my questions, my comprehension questions specifically for that particular student. I will drop it down a little bit or I will ask that particular student maybe to uh, retell in their own words what their classmate just said in answer to a comprehension question. So I have to know as a teacher, I have to 
feel and listen and hear if they're struggling with a response, I have to do something differently. So maybe I, I've had a very extreme case before where I think it was a level 10 class and the student probably should have been a level 7. And the other two students were getting frustrated because this student was slowing them down. So what I, when it was that student's turn, I just worked on only pronunciation with that student. I couldn't ask comprehension questions. So I had to tailor the lesson for the pronunciation, which is what she was having trouble with. Okay. And instead of soliciting answers from her, I provided more um, open-ended questions for her to either answer yes or no instead of making her um, give a longer response as the other two students were able to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. And one of the things that I've noticed that helps a lot, too, is giving them sentence starters to students mm -hmm. that, that need that. So sometimes you just think, or people might think, oh, they can just answer this because they're at this level, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes they still need just that little bit of a beginning statement to mm -hmm. get going. So pronunciation is an interesting thing to work on. Do you feel that that fills enough time or gives them enough value? Is there anything else that you feel like you need to add to it aside from pronunciation? I also, if I, uh, if I give pronunciation, I also give examples. Mm -hmm. And I also give examples of different ways that word can be used. I give an example in the context related to the lesson. Maybe it's a noun that can also be an adjective or, or, or an adverb. And, and I say you can also use the word this way. And then I might give some uh, colloquial examples and say, well, and if you were speaking to your friends, you might say this. But if you were speaking to your boss, you wouldn't say that. So I give them different uh, examples. And I find that when I do lessons like that, when I totally adapt the, the language for them, I get a, a lot more compliments. Thank you. I, I actually learned something. I get a lot of those compliments back from the students. Good. Because yeah. they feel like I took the extra time to give them what they need instead of just saying, okay, let's go to the next slide. I, yeah. I stuck with what they were struggling with. Yeah, definitely. So what do you do if there's just one sentence on a slide? How do you add to it? Well, if it's children, um, there's lots of different things. As you can see, I have a lot of props here. I have whiteboards. I have a magna doodle. I have all different kinds of things, musical instruments. So if it's children, it's so easy. Um, with children, you can tell stories. You can ask them to predict, um, especially if they are, uh, if it's a reading comprehension and they are at a level where they're understanding basic things in the story. I'll pause and I'll say, what do you think is going to happen to the butterfly or what do you, you know, why do you think he's doing that? Um, and that goes back to my days of classroom teaching. Yeah. Ask, you know, stopping frequently and asking for a lot of feedback. So I find that that is, uh, fills the time with, with, uh, children a lot better. And also with children at the beginning of the lesson, I like to play games and also play games at the end of the lesson. So with children, there's so many different activities that you can do. Um, if it's a lower level student, I did have a lower level student one time who had a lesson that only had one picture per slide and one word. And I think it was um, something like uh, word groups. So I, I got out my whiteboard with my, my letters and I just basically spelled different words and asked him to sound them out with me and we played a little game. I changed the letter and said, um, now what happens if I do, if I do this, what does, you know, what happens if I do this? And, and he loved it. He, he actually responded, probably not comprehending 100%, but he was producing and responding and it helped to really do something off the, off the lesson itself. Because when you do not have enough material on the lesson, you need to pull your resources from your virtual classroom here. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then, if it's a, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say if it's adults, yes. with adults, and there is very little material per slide, such as the travel lessons that are geared towards the level ones and level twos where they have maybe a picture of a train platform and say the train departs from the platform. 
So I will, um, this is where it's great if you have more than one student in the classroom because you can spread it out a little bit better. Um, I will ask them about times they have ridden a train. Where did your train depart from? Where did your train go? So we, we ask a lot of questions and I see depending on what their level is, I might ask them to tell a short story mm -hmm. about a time when they rode a train or how do you buy your ticket? So um, I had another lesson with adults one time that were very beginners and there was one picture per, per slide. So I asked them to give me as many sentences to describe this picture and we spent five minutes per slide describing the picture. The woman is wearing a red dress. The woman is pretty. The woman has long hair. The woman is tall. So we, you can do a lot with one picture if you, if you um, are creative enough. And you have to know, don't solicit from the students and tell me, what does this woman look like? Say, is she tall or is she short? Right. So again, pulling your resources from, from your virtual classroom. Yeah. Definitely. I've only had one level one at iTutor Group. <laughs> and it was one of the ERRs I got switched to. And oh. it was a group of three, thankfully. So there was, you know, we were able to, but they were definitely limited. I mean, they didn't know a few like phrases, hi, how are you, things like that. But it was yeah, interesting for me, for mm -hmm. sure, to be in that situation. I mean, we filled the time. And at the end, I we had time for questions. I always do free talk if there's time at the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were, we were just talking about where are you from? What do you do for work? Just the basics. So mm -hmm. it was interesting. I don't know. I, I, I like it a lot. That's one of my favorite things about iTutor Group is having actually free talk at the end. You know, mm -hmm. it's a great time to actually get to know your students. And if you do that, then if you do see a repeat student, they remember you, you know, because you took time to actually talk to them and, and get to know them. So I get a lot of lower level students, un unlike you. Um, I always do free talk at the beginning. Okay. And I also I also spread it out a little bit. I'll stop. Yes. And sometimes I'll just ask a really random question that has nothing to do with the slide. So what did you do at work today or what did you have for lunch today? Just to get their, just to give their, their brain a little break. Because even as adults, we need to take a brain break when we're learning a language. Yep. I spent, um, I speak Arabic. I've studied Arabic. I taught myself how to read and write, but I have formally studied it. And I spent the summer of 2015 in an intensive language program in Jordan where we were, it was a total immersion and we were supposed to speak and hear Arabic all the time. And my brain, my head sometimes felt like it was going to explode. So I can tell when the students are feeling stressed, because sometimes I'll hear, you can hear them sigh. Like, you can just, you can hear that frustration. So I'll be like, hey, um, what did you have for lunch today? You know, that, oh, yeah, do you eat that every day for lunch? So I do something to divert their attention away from maybe the frustration. If you know anything about crashing, you know about the effective filter. Um, with uh, when, when the effective filter gets raised, the language acquisition goes down. So the effective filter gets raised from stress and frustra frustration. Can you talk a little bit about what the effective filter is for people who might not know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's um, well, my my linguistics professor would kill me right now. But um, <laughs> uh, Krashen, of course, is one of the theorists in second language acquisition. Stephen Krashen, yep, yep. Um, one of uh, he also, I believe, said the language acquisition device, which is a black box that, that we, we are born with basically a device that helps us acquire language. Well, the effective filter was one of his theories that basically said in order to effectively acquire a language for natural usage, you have to be acquiring it in a meaningful and unstressful way. Yeah. So... The way I, I've taken several linguistics classes and the way it was always explained by my professors is that when you raise the student's stress level, their effective filter blocks acquisition from happening, to, to put it in, in layman's terms. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that. That's definitely something for people to know and, and allow people to have empathy for the situation that students are in. 
you know, sometimes just because we're all human, we can get frustrated, mm -hmm. whatever, or the student isn't participating in the way that we want, or they're disrupting class or whatever, but you can always go back to this could be the reason why, you know, so yeah, just making it a comfortable environment is so necessary. So you had mentioned uh, games that you play. Can you tell us a mm -hmm. couple good games to do on the fly? Mm -hmm. Well, one that I really like to do, especially with older kids that are maybe like 7, 8, 9, 10 in that age range, is I like to pick a really long word, uh, such as houseboat or grandmother, and I will open up a blank page and I'll type it, and I'll say, how many smaller words can you make from this? And they'll start... Um, they'll start looking and maybe they don't see any. So I'll highlight and say, how about this? Does this make uh, a word or let's look for some four letter words and let's look for three letter words or I'll assign if there's more than one student, you look for three letter words, you know, one student will look for two letter words and, and so on. So they really like that because I make it a competition. I'll like draw a line down the middle of the whiteboard and say, this is your column. This is your column. So that's one thing that's really fun. I also like to do the variation of tic-tac-toe, which actually um, is in the iTutor group um, activity pack that, that we have, where it's a tic-tac-toe board with sentence starters on it. And I really like to use that one. I'm planning on making another one with different questions on it because I think we're getting tired of using the same questions over and over again. But depending on which square they choose, they have to ask a classmate or myself, if there's no one else in the class, a question that starts with, have you ever, or do you like, and so, then, and then it's tic-tac-toe. So do they ask the question before they can put their X or their O? No, they choose where they want to put their X or their O, just as if we were playing tic-tac-toe, and wherever they put their X or their, or their O, they have to ask whatever question that is. And it's okay. usually like a, just a starter. Did you ever, do you like? What would you do if just okay you know, that's fun yeah. these are great mm -hmm. games maybe we should do a video just on games <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that would be nice okay so is there anything else that you want to share strategy wise for adapting the lesson on the fly i think um inappropriate material would be something really to talk about also and and this is uh, applicable with adults and children a lot of uh, a lot of companies out there will require you to stick with the lesson plan, do not deviate from the lesson plan, finish all the slides, and unfortunately, sometimes you just come across material that is inappropriate either for content, maybe it was created um, by someone who didn't understand cultural implications of what the material contained or what the lesson plan contained. I think it's it's better for me in those situations. What I usually do is I usually try to focus more on less on the content and more on the grammar at this point, more on the grammar and, and again, the pronunciation vocabulary rather than focusing on um, the actual content uh, because sometimes it, it, it makes for awkward questions if it's inappropriate. There are several um, children's lessons that I've come across that have maybe fairy tales that are from other countries that may be appropriate, but they have very adult themes, in my opinion. And I feel, oh, I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable dealing with this as content. So in those cases, I try to make it about grammar. So can you give and, us an example? Do you just pull a sentence and say, look at the way this sentence is put together? Or do you make it about past mm -hmm. tense or something? Or... Yeah, I will, I will again, having, having talked to the student for a few minutes at the beginning, having assessed um, if they can answer, answer a simple question, will they be able to handle a conversation like, um, uh, let's look at this grammar point and come up with some different examples. Uh, she will be going. Okay, what will you be going to do okay. next week? What, you know, I'll try to focus on the level of grammar that's in the lesson and not so much on the content. Sure. That makes sense. That's mm -hmm. a great idea. Yeah. So was there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up? Um, yeah, I think I want to tell a lot of the new teachers out there who are, who are teaching online 
to really just be yourself and don't be afraid to relax and be yourself with the students. I think a lot of a lot of um, new teachers, especially to the online environment, feel very stiff in front of the camera. And it's really important to remember there are people at the other end of your microphone connection and they are real people. And, and one thing that I learned, I had absolutely no experience with China before I started working for iTutor Group. I knew, I knew very few Chinese people here stateside and, you know, knew very little about the culture. Just through interacting with them through the, the casual conversations and the fun that we have in, in the lesson, I have learned so much about Chinese people and the Chinese culture. Uh, for example, I never knew how funny Chinese people were. They have such an awesome sense of humor. And I've had so many students, you know, we, we just laugh and laugh and laugh over over silly things in our lessons. So just relax and have fun with it. Don't be so don't be so worried about the the rules and regulations and the yep. everything else that's involved with it. You know, as long as yep. you're doing your job, as long as you're you're doing it well, have fun with it. Just relax and be yourself. Exactly. I totally agree. It can take some getting used to being in front of the camera and just that whole idea of teaching someone through a computer instead of in person. It, it mm -hmm. takes it takes a minute to get used to for sure. So it's great advice. Just be yourself. Have fun with it. You might think, oh, I have to be like this teacher or that teacher that you've seen somewhere along the way. I know there's lots of YouTube videos out there. So people feel like, oh my gosh, do I have to act this way or, you know, that way? <laughs> no, just be yourself. So, because if you're trying to act like someone else, it, everyone can tell. So, yeah. Exactly. 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 And iTutor group is so flexible as far as, um, I, I sign up for, for my time slots and I have no idea what I'm going to get. I could end up with, with children, adults, beginners. I tend to get a mix of everything on a daily basis. So it's really great because I enjoy the diversity of the different types of lessons that I deliver. I enjoy the diversity of the students and the flexibility of the, um, the, the interactive platform. Yeah. The, for sure. the interactive whiteboard. Yeah, for sure. It is. It's real fun. Thank you so much for joining me today, Iman, and mm -hmm. for telling us all your strategies. It's going to be a great help for everyone viewing this. So we really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course.